So I get loads and loads of requests for how I make my videos and specifically how I use race render and how I use backdoor to get the data and how I put that together to make the overlays on the videos. So this video here is entirely about how I do that and if you're not remotely interested in that at all probably this isn't the video to you watch or for you to watch in which case just skip on and don't worry about it. But if you do want to make videos using race render and backdoor then carry on watching and hopefully I can help you do that. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get hold of the software that I use to do the overlays and video editing and it's a program called Race Render 3 and you can get it at racerender.com and you can download it and there is an initial version to uh, let you get used to it and see if you want to do it and it limits you to, I think to like two minutes or three minutes of recording um, or overlays before it shuts down but it, you can try it and see if it's something you want to use. But yeah, the first thing is to download the software onto your machine and you want to have a reasonably powerful machine in order to use it, uh, especially if you're going to be using some of the higher resolutions like uh, 4K or 360 video or that kind of thing. So that's race render and you can download that to your computer. So this is the backdoor app and uh, you can get it for your iOS device or your Android device and when you first load it up um, you should be able to see your bike listed as e-bike um, and if I click on this one here it will connect to it and then if I can click on live feed there and it's going to show me the various bits of information the parameters that are on the, the ASI controller you're going to need a password and a log on to get on this uh, and if you don't have one um, good luck getting one from ASI because they don't hand them out unless you buy one of their um, OEM customer evaluation kits. So if I come through here and I click on the motor category here and it will load it up and I've already set it up here under the information with various things that I record. So I have like the vehicle speed, the throttle voltage, the motor temperature, the controller temperature, the battery current, the battery voltage, or battery volt, um, or current volts, uh, the motor current, the motor input power, and the RPM. I don't know why I've got the rotor frequency, but anyway. So if you don't have it set up like this, um, what you're going to need to do is create it. So if you do a long press on there, you can insert a parameter into your group. So if I click on insert parameter, I can then search through and pick any parameter I want. So, um, yeah, if I put in, say, voltage here, um, you've got various things. I'm, I'm not going to pop anything in here, but it, if I did, say, put voltage gain, and you can see it's put voltage gain in there for me to re record. Now, if you want to record this information, what you need to do is long press again, and it will come up here and if you click on open chart at the bottom and it will open a chart it'll only show the first five parameters there but when you click start it will then record all of these so it's recording now and it'll keep plotting those it's obviously not doing a thing because I'm not riding the bike um, but it is recording all that information and it will keep doing that as long as you keep your phone open. If you close your phone, it will shut it down. So it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. But leave it open, put it in your pocket, go off and ride. And then when you get back to the end, you click stop. And then you would also click, oh, hey, Roman. Um, then you also click close. And then that's it. That That's done. It saved it there. And uh, yeah, I wish Roman would go away never mind let's mute anyway so that that's done and you've saved that and then you need to go into your phone and you need to get that log and send it to your uh, computer somewhere so I'll show you guys how to do that next so on my phone it's in my internal storage and you need to find a folder called back storage this is an Android phone 
and then you've got your various profiles here and if you come up to data logs and you can find the latest data log which is I don't know <laughs> somewhere that's 2019 yeah probably be all around at the bottom so yeah that's the one I just recorded down here is the 13th of October 2020 um, and that's the information and then you need to send that to Google Drive or your computer or somewhere where you can where you can access it and that is is that part if you've done that correctly you will have recorded in backdoor the parameters that you selected So once you open up Race Render, you're going to be presented with a new project menu and you can use one of their presets, um, but they tend to be more for um, cars and that kind of thing where you get the data from a recording device that plugs in there somehow. But we're using this with, with bikes, I presume. Um, so what I would do is click on a blank project to start with and it will come up with this page here and uh, nothing here and you'll see up on the right will say input files and the first thing you do is you add in some video footage so if I go to the desktop here and I'm looking for the folder that I created earlier which I entitled race render here we go so I've got um, I've already keyframed this and it's some footage that I took with my salsa bike um, so if I select that and it will load up the the initial screen and you can scroll through the various parts of the footage and you can see me riding around on my bike um, so that's your footage um, the next part you need to then add is the file that contains the data that you got from recording on back door and it's here and it's this uh, CSV file so if I add in the CSV file and it's going to ask me if I want to add um, a data overlay on there um, so I, I could use one of the ones that I've already done but I'm going to do it right from the start so I'm going to assume that um, no we're not going to do that so we've got our video we've got our data on here and if you want to see some objects then we can then add down here where it says display objects so if we add a display object and let's say we want to put in the the RPM so we click on a tachometer here and let's just click on like a super simple one first one on the thing and it gives us the tachometer here and you can drag it around the screen and put it where you want um, so if we then go over here we've got our display object properties and you can close them down and you can double click on them object and it will bring it bring it back up again and if you come down here um, and we need to make sure that we have our input file selected here where it says input and then with the field we then click and then we pick the thing that we want from that so if we're looking for motor RPM so if we click on motor RPM there and then it selected that and it should yeah so now we've hit a point on our video where there's some data and it's telling us that we've got 7,070 RPM at the moment. Now we want to change that a little bit because at the moment you see we have our range here and we've got zero RPM, um, so 0.00, .00 to 8,000 RPM. Um, and you can change a whole number of things. You can change the colors of this, you can change all sorts. And I'm not gonna go super into this because you guys can figure this out for yourself and make some new and new unique things now I know that the max RPM on the bike is 12,000 so I'm going to put 12,000 in there um, and that's going to change my, my information there now I think I can choose whether to have decimals or not um, and you can change that as well now the trick is to get it lined up correctly um, so if I close this down here um, because at the moment, oh god, that sounds terrible. Um, let's change the volume a bit. So at the moment, it's not really synced to the actual riding. Like you, you can see the RPM, it's reading on the screen, but it's not lined up with the footage that's actually on the screen. And in order to get it lined up, you need to come over here to what's called the synchronization tool, or you can do side by side. So if you click on side by side, 
and it gives us um, the speed information here on the clip and then it gives us the video clip here um, so you want to unlink them all right so that when I scroll this it will move independently from this and then I want to move the video back to kind of the start of the video um, right before I get a big pickup of speed and then I can scroll this one here all the way down to the bottom and I think it's probably about this point here and then you click on OK and then if I come back here again I can push play and it takes a little bit of trial and error Uh, until you get this right. This is this is one of the hardest bits of video footage that I did because I did a lot of little low speed parts. Um, it's not remotely synced. Um, so if I go back to my side by side, I think at the moment that the RPM or the data information is too far in advance of what's going on in the video. So if I go back to my side by side again and I check my graph here and then I can again I can scroll this back a bit and then click again and basically you've got to keep doing this um, until you're happy with where it lines up and it's going to be a little bit easier probably with a cleaner bit of footage but I'm just showing you this um, as a particular example and there's loads of display objects you can add um, you could put in a bar here um, actually not that bar let's delete that so let's say I wanted to have my throttle in there um, so we've got a throttle one down here so we have a throttle here and then with our display object properties we can then come up and it's already auto populated it with not the one I want I want throttle voltage okay and then I need to click my range and you need to select the right range for the throttle and the maximum is 4 for this so now when I click play again and it will give me information as I open up the throttle. Um, again, it's not properly linked, and for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to really try to link it properly because it's going to take a lot of fannying around, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it'll tell you whether the throttle is wide open um, and it runs on the voltage, which is I think one to four volts for most most throttles. And there are loads and loads of things you can add. Um, all sorts of different dials and gauges there's graphs um, so if I put on there's an elevation graph um, but you can use these for other things too so for example if I put this elevation graph on here and I linked it to which we do it to let's do it to battery voltage and then let's select the range for the battery and this is a 72 volt battery so if I say the lowest battery from 68 volts and the highest charge battery was let's say 84 volts and then this will have effectively the voltage sag right at this particular point so this is your 80 volts right? and then this is as I open up the throttle and draw power um, it's pulling the voltage down. It's probably not the best one to use, but you, know, you can pick what you want and work out different things. Um, and then eventually, when you get good at doing it or you're happy with something, you can actually save these um, as a template. Um, so if I delete these here, and I delete that one as well, if I was to add a template to the project, um, I've got quite a few different ones on here 
but uh, for example when I was doing the original um, NXT stuff um, so if I click on this um, and click OK and it's not loaded it at all <laughs> All right, let's try it. Let's try it doing it differently. So if I add a template to the project and I click on that's the one that I made. This one. So if I click on this one there, I've got my information file there. I click OK and it's loaded up and auto populated already with all the things that I want. So I've got my throttle, I've got my um, battery watts and amps, I have my work motor watts and amps as well. So this is phase amps, this is battery amps, and you have your voltage here, and then you click play, and then it's, it's got that all. So you can make these, uh, and I suggest you do that. Once you're once you're happy with, with messing around with all of the different bits, I suggest you make your own stuff and then you can just easily load it in any time that you want to without doing it over and over and over again which is what I did when I first started getting to use it um, but you can make as many ones of these as you want and you can also then use Photoshop so if you create overlays um, then you can put things on top of this and hide them away and that's how I created some of my earlier mock-ups of the NXT system um, so yeah, that's basically uh, race render. And once you've done it, you can create, click a video, um, and you can choose your output profile. So I normally go for YouTube. At the moment, I normally click high definition, 1080p, and then you just click on start rendering, and it will produce the whole file. Um, yeah, let's call it on the desktop. Um, all right, let's just call it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, all right, so and then it will output this onto the desktop, um, and it'll take a short or long time depending on how good your PC is. But yeah, it'll record it all. I'll cancel this because I don't really want to do it. And that's it. You will then have a file that you can upload with that overlay on, and you can put that on YouTube or whatever. So that's about it. Uh, if people have questions on it and I haven't covered anything or I've just been completely confusing about this whole thing, let me know and I will do my best to answer those questions. Cheers.